Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. Today we have with us Stephen Ficanza, the creative hustler. Welcome to the program, Stephen. Hey, Mike, what's up? Glad to be here. Thanks hey, I love when I hear names of companies or even email addresses, right? There's stories behind both of those. So I love <laughs> just the simplicity of the creative hustler because I think that, you know, too many times people, you know, A, don't hustle and aren't creative about their hustle. So tell us a little bit about your background and then uh, what is the creative hustler? Yeah, uh, you know, this, this could be a, uh, a three-hour chat, or we can make it into a slip <laughs> note version. Yep, yep. Actually, uh, you know, I've, I've been a musician my whole life, and even when I was in college, I was playing in bands, but not only was I playing, you know, as a guitar player, but I was also out getting us gigs and getting us opportunities and, you know, pushing out the our, you know, our press kits and trying to get us on the radio, and I just had that sense of, business uh, acumen to me. And throughout my career, which has really seen me go from gig musician to eventually owning my own agency, it was always, how do I combine my, my passions and my purpose, which is be, the act of being creative and music and, um, you know, kind of all of that that comes with being a renaissance man of some sort, while making a living, <laughs> while yeah. actually making money, because there were 20 of my friends, Mike, who Brilliant musicians, amazing performers. I mean, just the top-notch artists, but they could barely scrape enough money together to go out and buy a beer. And it was like, no, this this can't be. This can't be it. There's got to be a way that we can truly live at the intersection of creativity and business. Uh, and it wasn't until, like I said, I had um I had owned my own agency for about five years, and uh, you know, right about around 2011, my business partner and I we were just looking at at each other, and we had a, another piece of software that we had that we decided to kind of sell some equity shares, and it just became time to move on to the next phase of of, of uh, our lives. So um, him and I went our separate ways, but within a six month time period, my life really came really came crashing down. So my business, we were closing our doors. Uh, I was in a long-term relationship that just kind of uh, shot the bed. um, And I was really left, you know, kind of of homeless, sleeping on my couch in my office for a little bit and and couch surfing. And then um, I I was, I I got shanked in the neck by a homeless guy in broad daylight in San Diego uh, with a Phillips head screwdriver. There you go. uh, not everyone yeah, can I, say that. <laughs> not everyone. I tell you what, I instantly put that on my bucket list and I crossed it right off. Yep. Like, I was good. <laughs> um, Get shanked in the neck by a homeless guy by a, with a Phillips screwdriver. Check. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm good, you know. And uh, all that happened, and I was such a – I was turning 30, and it was such a, you know, interesting time in my life. And I remember – taking the pen to the paper and just to start writing. I just started writing my thoughts and my ideas and my hopes and dreams and aspirations and, you know, asking myself the question of, you know, Hey man, if money wasn't an option. What would I do? Mm-hmm. And, and, and for me, the answer to that question was always like, I want to provide something for someone and make somebody happy utilizing my creativity. Uh, and over the course of the next, you know, seven years, that's really what I've honed in on. Uh, and I did an actual talk for a local university here in Southern California in, um, in 2012, in March of 2012. And it was originally titled How to Have Creative Swagger. And it was all about for these students, hey, guys, you're going to graduate in three months. It was for their advertising club. You're going to graduate in like three months, two, three months. Like, the hell are you going to do after? Like, yeah. where, you, you, think you, you think you, it's going to be that easy? You think you can get a job at an agency, and next thing you know, you're working on, like, a Nike account? Like, it's not going to work like that. You need to, you need to hustle. You need to get um, in front of the people you want to get in front of. And I'm having this conversation with the students, and afterwards, it just it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was the creative hustler, and it's leveraging yeah. our um, – really, truly our, our, our God-given, nature-given right of being creative because we are all creative. We are human beings. We know how to make something out of nothing. Even for those who are like, oh, well, I'm not a designer. I'm not an artist. I'm not a musician. That's kind of BS. Like, no, everyone, 
knows how to be creative. It's just like, how do you combine that into a business sense? And it's really, I started, you know, crafting ideas, honestly, for the next like three, four years. And it wasn't, you know, from 2012 until about 2016, it was just an idea. And I would write some blogs and I'd been published on like Advertising Week or HubSpot. And I actually got invited to do a talk at a uh, marketing conference in Arizona called Bolo at the time. And the talk was centered around how to be a creative hustler. And that's what I thought it was. I was going to show people how to be a creative hustler. And um, about a year later, a couple of years later, uh, this is uh, going into about June 2016, I, uh, I had been invited to teach a course in Milan at a, uh, at a university on branding um, because if by, by trade, that's you know, what I am, I'm a brand strategist. Uh, and then I also was invited to do a talk, um, a keynote at uh, New Media Europe. And I decided, you know, against my will, my, my wife, better half, better good looking person and business partner pushed me and said, no, dude, you are going to do that keynote that they want you to do, and you should really do it on um, the Creative Hustler Manifesto. And the manifesto had just been a collection of, you know, words uh, and thoughts and ideas that I'd kind of, uh, you know, created over a couple years. It was that talk, and it was June of 2016, uh, it was that talk that changed the trajectory of what the Creative Hustler was. And we left there I, as soon as I got off stage, and some of what I spoke about was this idea of creating your own ladder and saying, screw everyone else's ladder. We all have the access to tools and the knowledge to build our own. Why don't we? And it's just it's this idea of um, you know, being proactive in your approach to life and your personal brand that it manifests itself into opportunities. Uh, and afterwards, everyone had come up to me and I was so overwhelmed with the response that it was the, the, the picture, you know, the outline of the photo had been painted for me. All I had to do was color it in. So we went head first on creating our own podcast, starting to, you know, uh, create our own tribe, our own um, you know, audience and, uh, you know, and that kind of brings us to where we are now. And, uh, and I really think, you know, we're starting to gain some traction. People are starting to understand this, this, that it's a lifestyle that we're trying to promote here. And it's a lifestyle that says, Hey, I am not the creative hustler, but we are all creative hustlers. If we only just have the confidence to understand that and to actually truly live it, uh, it's magical. It's magic that's going to happen. You know, you said a mouthful, but what is apparent with that is you are dialed in, you are focused, and you're not all over the place, right? I mean, you have come to the epiphany moment of, you know, last year when it just all came together, and now you just are running, uh, you know, full steam ahead in one uh, specific direction, and I love that. Um, here's Here's something that I... Uh, wonder if we could contrast. There's a lot of people that feel like they need to hustle and grind, but if they don't have that clarity and focus and direction, they're hustling and grinding and trying this, and that didn't work 10 seconds after they tried it, so they're trying something else, and they feel like they're creative, but they're not giving it enough time to take root and actually do something. Mm -hmm. So how, how important do you uh, feel that it is to have something where you've got that idea, you know, the creative idea, but then you've got to have that focus so that you're heading in the right direction with all of your energy? Yeah, that's – it's fun. You say, you know, you say the term – I think people – they wear this term hustle on their sleeves like, yo, I worked 85 hours this week. That's hustle. That's grind. But, like, are you, being, are you being productive or are you just being busy? And I, and I think with entrepreneurs and I think with, with a lot of people these days, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, uh, we're all – affected by shiny bright new object syndrome and you know one thing that's hot now everyone you know runs towards that light until the next thing is hot and everyone runs there and there is that lack of focus and what what i say to that is like we have to truly start from the beginning and we really need to set a strategy in place because all these fly-by-night tactics, they're going to come and they're going to go. And everyone's going to have their five minutes of fame. And I say to that is uh, salute to them. Have your five minutes of fame. But I'm here for the long haul, and I want to play the long game here. And that takes a true strategy, and that takes really, you know, like, like Socrates says, know thyself. First, the unexamined life is not worth living. And I approach branding and I approach this lifestyle from a very philosophical, a very philosophical viewpoint of I need to understand uh, me first. And, and how can I 
um, expect to grow a business or grow my own brand if I don't know what my own brand stands for. And, and, you know, a lot of what I talk about is this idea, is this notion of living a, a life where your core values um, are aligned with your day-to-day actions. And if mm. you think about that, that's your internal beliefs matching your external actions. Because so many of us are one person on one network and another person on another network, and we start believing our own hype, and then ego starts to come into play, and now we're just a ticking time bomb because we are, we are our own worst enemy. And I truly believe that if we kind of take an opposite approach to that and, you know, spend the time, you know, you know Melissa always says, uh, taking a sledgehammer to a glass table and then putting it back, putting it back together, and as we take some time to really examine ourselves what we want out of life, what we want our life to stand for, and then asking ourselves those certain questions. Like I said to myself in the beginning, you know, if money wasn't an option, what would I do? And everyone else chuckles. Ah, Mike, I sit on the beach for the rest of my life. And no, you would not. Yeah. We're way too creative for that. Like, what do you really want to do? And those are the questions I don't think a lot of people are asking themselves, and that's what's missing. And this world has become so gray and so full of white noise because of these fly-by-night tactics. So to bring that back to your original question, uh, you know, the hustle and the grind and the focus, it's about being a proactive with your approach and having a true strategy that you're consistently and constantly um, auditing and, and addressing to make sure that you're staying on the right track and that you're remaining true, um, that your core values in your day-to-day are are still aligned. You know, you said something interesting about being one person on one, another person on another platform. Um, I think that bears some good uh, um, pause there because a, a lot of things that we see in the marketing, branding kind of world today is authenticity and transparency. So I think that's what you were alluding to. So how important do you think that, A, that it is, we can uh, agree that, yeah, it's important. So we don't even need to talk about that. But what does that really look like? Because how do you um, be someone different on one platform than another? What does that actually look like? And then how do you get that aligned correctly? Yeah, you know, you know, you might be able to look at it like this. You know, some people on um, their, you know, their Facebook, they're constantly out there putting themselves in the public and constantly, you know, trying to portray this. Um, highlight real lifestyle, but that's not, that's not right. Like there is struggle behind that, but everyone's always like, Oh, you see. And, and that's very, maybe it's part imposter syndrome or whatever you want to call it. But you know, that's that perception. Yes. Perception is everything, but there is a lot more. What you don't realize is that entrepreneur that, you know, you might see on Facebook of that, you know, uh, sitting on a beach, making a rain of hundred dollar bills, went to 15 years of hell to get there. Mm-hmm. And that's really, you know, I think when looking at authenticity and, I, and what I'm seeing in, in the marketplace is those that, are, those that are showing the behind the scenes, the good, the bad, or the ugly, the ups and downs uh, from a 360 viewpoint as opposed to one singular view of everything is awesome, uh, you know, they're going to have the longevity because there's empathy that comes with that. It's not just, um, you, you, you know, an entrepreneur that you see out there that's living this highlight reel, you know, you're jealous or, or whatever. You, know, you want to be able to empathize with them and say, hey, wow, that entrepreneur, you know, even though he's him or her are, you know, levels above me, they also suffer just like I do. They also, mm-hmm. you know, uh, have all these different range of emotions. And, you know, there's a great quote by Marcus Aurelius, and he's the famous Roman emperor um, and Stoic philosopher. And he says, uh, uh, let us not talk about being a good man, just be a good man. And we could, we could relate that back to branding. Uh, don't talk about being a good brand. Don't talk about being authentic. Just be it. Where's that yeah. silent type? You know, everyone is so quick to say, well, I'm authentic and buzzword here and buzzword there and buzzword everywhere. Uh, and it's just like, just stop. Just do it. Like Nike says, just be that person and let your actions speak louder than your words. But everyone now has an amplifier, so they think they need to use it. Yeah, isn't it interesting how it's like um, uh, – Years and years ago, I used to be in banking, and they would train the tellers to detect 
counterfeit bills, not by touching all of the counterfeit bills and going, this is a counterfeit bill. They would, they would have them literally go through and go, here's a good bill, here's a good bill, so that when a, a bad bill comes through, now until it got really high tech and, that, and then you had to do different things, mm-hmm. but the point is all of a sudden you go, hey, something's not right here. So don't just – don't say I am authentic. Be it, because then that says it without you having to draw attention to it. It just becomes obvious, and I think that's really, really huge. So what? Um, let's kind of talk a little bit about what, what do you feel if you were talking to someone that says, love it, where do I start? <laughs> um, that's great. And, I, I say first and we I don't have nine and a half more hours to continue talking, because <laughs> <laughs> I know that's how long it would take. But I mean, for real, where does someone start at least thinking or planning toward uh, taking this step uh, uh, that we're talking about here? Uh, I, I think first it comes with a big internal internal dialogue what you have with yourself. You know, Mike, you're, you're a big you're big into positioning and. Uh, and I, I love positioning as well, especially when it comes to to the branding world. And uh, everyone has their own formula for figuring out positioning. But uh, my formula is I ask three sets of questions um, and kind of in the level of importance. The first and most important question is what do you or I, in this case, what do I believe to be true about my brand? And with that, we're going to ask a bunch of other additional questions. For example, if money wasn't an option, what would you do? What do you want your life to stand for? What kind of relationships do you uh, – you know, what, what kind of person you want to be in your various relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And we write everything down. And it's a giant brain dump. And this is um, – and it's important to write it down. It's important to not just internalize these questions because everyone can do that, um, but it's been very important to get it down on paper because you're going to see – we're going to see a couple of trends in a little bit. Then you also ask yourself, uh, if I have current customers – or if there are people who I do want to um, attract, what do they believe to be true about my type of person or about me? And write that stuff down as well. Um, and then the same thing is going to be true about, you know, your industry and where you want to operate. And this is what you believe to be true. And there's a whole slew of questions. I'm not trying to make this a branding exercise by any means. But where you start is that first of asking yourself these internal questions. And whenever I start working with, whether it's an entrepreneur or a business owner, uh, you may want to call it a stakeholder interview. You may want to call it a personal audit. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but we're going to spend some time together and we're going to get down to your true motivations. And we're going to get down to the core of, you know, like Simon Sinek is why do you do what you do? And why do you want to do what you do? And to me, that's the biggest, that's, that's the biggest, uh, uh, you know, question we can ask ourselves. And um, in doing so, what I hope to achieve, and especially working with someone, and you could be, like I said, you could be um, a, just a creative or you could be a, an entrepreneur, solopreneur, um, a nine-to-fiver even, you know, and, and more often than not, nine-to-fivers are coming to me saying, I, I, I know I'm destined for more, but how? How do I do it? And it's all about finding that right position. And, and that right position, like you know, Mike, is – uh, everyone has a unique position, just like we all have unique thumbprints. And uh, that's really what I like to help, you know, extrapolate from people. And, 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 and more, you know, less of me telling them what, they're, what it is, uh, but more helping, more so helping them discover on their own terms what it is they stand for and what it is their life should be about. Uh, and, and more often than not, uh, we end up, you know, you end up, you're able to, make a business model out of it. You're able to realize what your purpose is. And, and hopefully, uh, if all goes well, you find your little piece of paradise living at the intersection of creativity and business. I, I love it. I think that's uh, just awesome to, to just bring it into that succinct uh, uh, summary like that. Let's say that someone said, uh, sounds good to me. I need to start. I need to start with the questions, the why, all of that. Um, w- do you have like a, a helpful document, helpful download that you can provide that would help people get started and that kind of would help them even get acquainted with what you provide them as well? Yeah, absolutely. I do have a personal branding blueprint that um, is out for everyone to check out. And it's at the, the creativepuzzle.com slash personal dash branding dash blueprint. And I know that'll be in, in the show notes. And essentially I talk about four main areas of your personal brand in this, in this blueprint. And it, uh, it starts with your story, which is essentially everything we've been talking about. It's your position. It's your why it's, uh, 
you know, your, your reason for being. Uh, it talks about uh, leaving a lasting mark. And part of that is creative. Part of that is talking about how you visually compose yourself to the public. Uh, and then we talk about uh, your online brand. And uh, for most people who talk about online branding uh, for personal branding, they would end it right there. Or, or for most people and coaches in, in a position like me, it's all about your online brand. Um, and yes, I, I, I agree. But we got to take it a step further than that because your offline brand is equally, if not more important than your online brand, because let's, yeah. let's be real. I mean, Zuckerberg could take away Facebook tomorrow and the internet could shut down for whatever reason. Who knows? This world is, you know, I'm not surprised by anything that happens in this world, but what, what happens if that does, you know, that you know, the internet does happen to cease to exist. If you've only taken the time to build yourself online, no one's going to know you offline. You're not going to have that skill set to know how to network properly, know how, the art of the follow-up. You know, how long should I wait to contact someone? How should I contact them? Mm. You know, or how to even, uh, you know, your, 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 your appearance when meeting someone and customs. What if you meet someone of a different, you know, uh, of an Asian background or an African background? How are you supposed to act? with, with, you know, in a business setting or how are you supposed to, you know, network with a person like that, even having a phone conversation um, and just talking in general and make it, are you using clutch words or pregnant pauses? How are you speaking? Are you speaking articulate? Uh, all of that plays such an important role on, on your personal brand. And, and I really approach it like that. And if you can't tell already, I definitely bring a more philosophical approach to it because um, it's something that I believe that, you know, asking ourselves these internal questions. And when all else fails, all we have is our name and our reputation. Mm. And it's with that mentality that I say, I'm all in. I'm going to put my, I'm going to draw my line in the sand. This is what I'm about. And how can I also help others? Because I think, you know, like I, like I think I mentioned in the beginning, everyone's searching for their five minutes of fame. But, uh, you know, we're here for a lot longer than five minutes. You got it. I mean, I, I love it. I, I love your passion and energy, and that's just so awesome. And um, thank you for making that download available, and I'll make sure that the direct link is right there in the show notes, so that is awesome. And, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on the show today, and, and it was really great talking and, and just getting some of your mindset, and I, and I love that. Mike, I had a blast. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.